Professor William Boone is a professor of psychometrics and a university distinguished scholar from the Department of Educational Psychology of Miami University. Professor William Boone is an expert known around the world with respect to the application and teaching of Rush measurement. Bill earned his PhD at the University of Chicago where Benjamin Wright of Wright Map fame served as his PhD thesis advisor. Bill was a professor at Indiana University Bloomington and is now a professor at Miami University. He has received numerous teaching and research awards. He lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, USA. Dr. Boone has authored two introductory Rush books, Rush Analysis in the Human Sciences 2014, and the book Advances in Rush Analysis in the Human Sciences 2020. The first book has had nearly 60,000 chapter downloads. A recent scientometric review published in Frontiers of Psychology shows the book is one of the most influential publications in Rush measurement research. In addition to these two books, he is the author and co-author of over 100 published peer-reviewed research articles. During his career, he has presented hundreds of talks concerning the application of Rush measurement. When Bill is not writing about Rush, he is a frequent presenter of Rush workshops throughout the world. His primary professional goal is to introduce the use of Rush measurement throughout the world. He can be contacted through LinkedIn, ResearchGate, and of course email at boonwjd at gmail.com. In his talk today, Professor Boone discusses Rush measurement. Hi everybody, um, I am Dr. William Boone and I'm going to be presenting a brief video to you about Rosh analysis. Certainly one can't present everything about Rosh in 10 or 15 minutes, um, but I hope that this presentation that I've created for you will give you an introduction to Rosh. I've worked in Rosh for almost 30 years now. I received my PhD um, under the guidance of Dr. Benjamin Wright, who was the person that worked with Georg Rosch, who was from Denmark. And I really want to encourage you to consider using Rosch analysis techniques when you want to develop a test, when you want to develop a survey or questionnaire, but also, if you have an existing test or an existing survey of questionnaire, Rosh analysis is very important. And then really thirdly, regardless if you develop a new test or use an existing test to develop a new survey or use an existing survey, you want to make sure that you use Rosh measurement to prepare your data for statistical tests. So those are the sorts of things that I'm going to be explaining to you today, and I hope you will enjoy this broadcast. All right, everybody, um, to help you prepare for your Rosh journey, I'd like to recommend that you consider reviewing two books that I've written. They are both written for the beginners. They're written for graduate students who might want to use Rosh. They're written for researchers who might need to use Rosh or want to use Rosh. These books are non-technical in nature, and they really talk you through step-by-step step in a very simple manner how to conduct a Rosh analysis. So the first book is entitled Rosh Analysis in the Human Sciences. It's published by Springer, and you should be able to get it at your library very easily. And then the second book that I published is called Advances in Rosh Analysis in the Human Sciences. So both of these books are very user-friendly. Each chapter starts with a conversation between two students. 
Each chapter ends with a conversation between two students. There are sample activities, and I talk you through step by step how to conduct one particular type of Rosh analysis. And I also show you how you could write up a Rosh analysis for an article or for your dissertation. So I would recommend that you try to get these two books and they will help you. Okay, everybody, we're almost ready to look at the PowerPoint slides that I put together for you, but I just wanted to provide you with a couple general comments. I've already explained when you might want to use Rosh. It's when you develop a test or use a test or develop a survey or um, utilize a survey that's already been developed. And then also you want to use Rosh to prepare your data for statistical analysis. Let me very briefly talk about why I think Rosh is so helpful and important. Number one, if you understand or you learn to understand Rosh theory, it's really a way of thinking about how you design tests and surveys. It's very, very simple to utilize. And by using Rosh thinking, you can develop tests and surveys of very, very high quality. Also, Rosh thinking will help you critique existing tests or surveys. So if you're trying to decide on which test to select for a project or which survey to select for a project, Rosh can help you greatly. Other things that Rosh allow you to do. If you look at a typical report for a test or for a survey, often some sort of measure of alpha or KR20 will be supplied. Um, and then also there'll be some discussion of validity. Um, I guess what I would say is Rosh provides a very large number of techniques that you can use to look at the validity of your instrument, the reliability of your instrument, and it can be used to consider how well your instrument is functioning. And I would say it's my experience that if I'm doing an analysis of a test or a survey with Rosh, there might be 50 different types of things that I look at, look at with validity and reliability and instrument functioning. It's very, very easy to look at these things and it takes a tiny bit of practice, but you can write up these investigations that you've conducted to look at a survey instrument or a test um, for an article very easily. So I just want to remind you, or I want to tell you that there's Rosh thinking that you can use to develop a survey or to critique a survey, but also there are a large number of Rosh techniques that can be used to evaluate how well an instrument is functioning. And I want to really, really encourage you, if you're looking at this video, that you can do Rosh. You do not have to be earning a PhD in psychometrics. You do not need to be earning a PhD in statistics. You could be a graduate student in market research. You could be a professor in medicine. You could be a professor in biology education. You could be a graduate student in mathematics and investigating mathematics education issues. So you do not need to be someone who's working on the intricacies of the mathematics of Rosh. And there are so many research projects in the world that need to use Rosh, and you can do it. So I really want to encourage you to do that. So now I'm going to share a number of slides, and then I'll come be back at the end of the um, broadcast to talk with you a little bit more. Thank you. All right, everybody. Um, I've got some slides, and by all means, contact me if you have any questions. Again, William Boone. I'm at Miami University, and my email is on that slide. So I'm going to provide a brief overview of some issues um, that can be confronted using Rosh measurement techniques. So, um, first of all, um, I want you to imagine that you wanted to administer a rating scale survey to some patients um, in the field of quality of life. And this might be a common survey. You can see there's a rating scale, 
and there's some numbers coded, one, two, three, four, five, for the set of items. Um, here would be another survey that could be given. You have a number of items, and you can see you have a rating scale, in this case, from 1 to 7. So that's quite common. All right. Here's another scale. You can just answer yes and no. But in fact, yes and no is also a rating scale. All right. Um, one of the problems with what people have done in the past is they've simply added up those numbers, one, two, three, four, five, um, for people's answers um, to a rating scale survey. And there's some, there's some problems with doing that. There's some difficulties with doing that. And I'm going to talk about um, what are some of the problems. Okay, everybody, I've just sent, shown you a number of surveys where you can answer through a rating scale. And there's some numbers that are used to code people's answers. So that's quite common um, in social science research. Okay, what is the problem with just adding up those numbers for each person? The problem is that the rating scale, if we have a rating scale of strongly agree, agree, disagree, and strongly disagree, we might code those numbers 4, 3, 2, 1. 4 for strongly agree, um, 3 for agree, 2 for disagree, and 1 for strongly disagree. That coding of those rating scale categories with numbers is totally fine, but one cannot immediately do math with those numbers. When you code those numbers 4, 3, 2, 1, you're saying that the jump from strongly agree to agree is exactly the same jump as agree to disagree is exactly the same jump from disagree to strongly disagree. But the problem is strongly agree could be here, agree could be here, disagree could be here, and strongly disagree could be here. So one of the things that Rosh analysis does is it does not assume that those jumps from strongly agree to agree to disagree to strongly disagree are equidistant. It does not assume that you have a linear rating scale. So one of the key flaws in past analyses that have been done have to do with assuming that a rating scale is linear. The second thing that Rosh does is usually people have just added up the people's answers to each item on a survey. But the problem is, if somebody got a 4 for one item and put a 4 for another item, um, an analyst would treat both those number 4s as being the same. But the problem is, not all items are a sur on a survey are equally agreeable. So what I want you guys to listen and think about is that a giving a 4 for one item might not really mean giving a 4 for a different item. So one of the things that Rosh does for a rating scale, it takes into consideration that the rating scale might not be linear. And then also, very importantly, it does not assume that all items are of the same agreeability. So I guess you could think about this in terms of a test. If we had a 10-item multiple choice test, would we analyze it with Rosh? We do not assume all items are of the same difficulty. So just because somebody got one point from one item, that doesn't mean the same thing as getting one point correct for another item. So those are two reasons why you want to use Rosh. Rosh does not assume a linear rating scale, and Rosh does not assume all items are of equal difficulty. Or in the case of a survey where you can agree, Rosh does not assume items are all of the same agreeability. All right, everybody, I want to talk about another problem with the traditional analysis of survey or test data that actually can be confronted with Rosh. So it's quite common to add up the total score of people answering a test. It's quite common to add up the total raw score 
of people completing a survey. So for example, here's a quote from a potential study that talks about patients having a total raw score of 40 before a treatment and patients having a total raw score of 50 on a survey after a treatment. So there's just been this change from 40 to 50 points. Okay, there's a major, major flaw in this. And the flaw is not only have the people analyzing the data been using raw data, they've just been counting up how many questions were answered with what point total. And remember I said that raw rating scales data can't be used, and it's because rating scale data is nonlinear. But the other problem is we have no way to know what the meaning of that change from 40 to 50 is. So 40 raw scores points before treatment, 50 raw score points after treatment. And in Rosh, there's something very beautiful that we can create called a right map. And it's a way of explaining the meaning of this change. And that's what I'm going to share with you now in the hopes that you see yet another reason why you should use Rosh. Okay, everybody, what I put together here for you is a Wright map. It's named after Benjamin Wright, who I talked about, worked with Georg Rosh. And this Wright map used to be called a person item map. And first of all, I want to talk you through what I am showing you here. And this Wright map is very, very helpful. First of all, there was a survey that asked people who responded how often they had different sorts of problems. So how often did they have back pain? How often did they have dizziness and so on? So those were the items of the survey. So on the right hand side, you have the items of the survey. And these items are organized in this analysis from things that were rarely reported as taking place to things, excuse me, things that were most likely to be taking place to things that were least likely to be taking place. So the first thing that you want to look at on this right map is you want to look at the ordering of the items. And the ordering of the items tells a very interesting story. So if you were working on a research project, it could be that you write an entire paper or an entire chapter of your dissertation just on what you see on these ordering of these items from the bottom to the top. These items tell a story of things that occur often and things that don't occur often. And remember, the location of these items is not corrupted by the nonlinear scale. It's corrected. So there are many, many papers that present a right map and interpret these items from the bottom to the top. What's important for you to know is items that are near each other, I'm circling here and here, these are items that are being reported at about the same level. So that's important for you to note. And then finally, when we design measurement instruments in Rosh, we will look at a right map and we'll look at where there are gaps in our organization of items. When we see some big gaps, it suggests that maybe we might need to add an item to our survey that would fill the gap. Now, of course, you might have to try a number of the items to see what you could do to fill the gap. But to make your measurement instrument stronger, you would want to fill these gaps. So you could imagine if you were making meter sticks at a factory and you had a machine that was cutting marks on a piece of wood to make your meter stick, it could be that you want to cut more marks on your meter stick. So one thing that we use in Rosh is we look at this meter stick, we look for gaps, and then we try to maybe author new items that can fill the gap. The second thing that's important 
is for you to look at the ordering of the items, and that can tell a story. Okay, the left side are the people, and in this analysis, the pound sign might have been used to indicate 10 people, and a dot might indicate between 1 and 9 people. But you can see this is a very large data set. You can see it's sort of normally distributed. What's important for you to know is these are locations of people along the scale. These are using the raw data and then the Rosh model. So the location of people is not corrupted by the fact that raw rating scale data is nonlinear. So when you're doing a Rosh analysis, you can also compute the measures for each person using a Rosh scale, and then those measures can be used for statistical analysis. All right, everybody, here's another slide. And I want to briefly explain to you something extremely powerful about Rosh measurement. Please remember that the person measures, the person measures on this left side, and the item measures are on the same scale. So what that allows you to do is it allows you for any person measure to then describe what it means for a person to have a particular person measure. So I'll just repeat that. That means if you take any of these person measures, you can now describe what it means to have a particular person measure. Before Rosh, you could not describe what it meant to have a particular measure. So let's just take a person that has these measures. And I won't explain it now. It's in my book, and you can look it up in the chapters. But when a person has this measure for the analysis that I did, you can just draw a horizontal line across the right map. And the way that I did the analysis in Rosh is for that person, pretend that they have my name Bill, it means that there's more than a 65% chance that they report having these problems. Arms, legs, joint pain, feeling tired, low energy, back pain, trouble sleeping. And there's less than a 65% chance that they report these other things. So we could go to any person's measure. We can draw a line so if we go to this person right here, draw a line, and then we were trying to explain what does it mean for somebody to have this measure, we would look at the items that fall below the measure. Those would be things that that person probably would report as having. And then the items above this person's measure would be probably things that this person would report as not having. All right, everybody, here's another slide. It's identical, but I have some other markings. So what I'm imagining is that I did the analysis of the Rosh person measures. This means the Rosh measures that are based upon adding up those raw scores for each person to the survey. And I am then pretending that I then did some statistics and I calculated what the average measure was for the females and what the average measure was for the males. So for the males, there's a 65% chance that they're going to mention these items. And for the males, there's less than a 65% chance percent chance they're going to mention these items. For the females, there is more than a 65% chance they're going to mention these items. And for the females, there's less than a 65% chance they're going to mention these items. Okay. You could do a statistical test comparing all the female measures and all the male measures. Maybe you're doing a t-test. And let's say you come up with a significant statistical significant difference. 
and you find, let's say, a large effect size. And so you want to report that there was a significant difference between the females and the males on this survey. So before Rosh, you would just report that the females had a higher overall score than the males on the survey, and you would report the effect size. But there'd be no way to explain what the meaning of the difference was between the females and the males. There would be no way to explain the difference between the females and the males. What's incredible, what's ulti really incredible about the right map is these items that lie between these two lines, these items describe how females and males differ. So constipation, diarrhea, nausea, headaches, stomach pain, shortness of breath, dizziness. These are the medical problems where the females differ from the males. So instead of just reporting that the females differed from the males based upon some statistics, now you can actually describe using words, using parts of your survey as to how the males and females differed. Hi everybody, uh, Dr. Boone back with you. Um, so just a brief summary um, in terms of what we've covered. Um, I do want to encourage you to use Rosh analysis in your analysis of test and survey data. If you're developing a test or survey, you really want to use Rosh. If you're utilizing existing test or survey, you want to use Rosh. Rosh helps you evaluate how your instrument functions. So it helps you look at the reliability and the validity of the instrument, and that will help you do a better job. Rosh does not assume that rating scales are linear. And also Rosh does not assume that items on a survey all have the same amount of agreeability. The way you could think about this is with a test, a multiple choice test. Rosh would not assume that getting an item on, getting one item correct, for example, a very difficult item on the test correct, has the same meaning as getting a very easy item on the test correct. I mentioned um, two books that I've written that are very easy to read, and I encourage you to get those, and they will help you learn Rosh. And then I've gone through one little example, a part of a Rosh analysis, where we create something called a right map. And what's important for you is that one can calculate the measures of anybody that takes a test or a survey. Those can be plotted on the right map. The items can be plotted on the right map. You can evaluate the quality of your instrument by looking at where the items are located. Do you have any gaps on your items? Do you have some items that are close near each other? Maybe some of those might be removed from your survey. And then most importantly, when you use Rosh analysis, there is um, a way to explain what the meaning is of a person having a particular measure. And I showed you how to do that. So by all me means, email me with any questions that you have to that Gmail account and then I'll look forward to hearing from you. So take care, and good luck with your Rosh work.